Hey guys, James with Esprit Model Jetty USA. I want to go over a little bit about Device Explorer and setting up the receivers in Device Explorer as far as doing channel assignments, setting up failsafe. Uh, we'll go ahead and show you how to do that. I'm using a Jetty R9 Duplex EX receiver, uh, one of our Jetty uh, lithium batteries, one of our receiver packs, um, and of course the uh, Jetty DS16 or DS14 radio. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump into Device Explorer. So go Model Device Explorer. Log into the R9. Uh, once we're in, there's a couple of things to, to go through here. First thing is Serial Link. Uh, this is the type of output that we're, that we're doing with the receiver. In this case, it's Jetty Box or Servo. So all nine of the outputs, uh, or outputs one, put one, one through nine, are set up for servo output. Uh, you can change that to PPM positive, PPM negative, EX bus, or UDI. Uh, this becomes a case if you're using something like Powerbox systems or you're setting up an MCOTEC power distribution system, if you're using them in conjunction with our Central Box 200, or if you're flying a, you know, a fly barless controller or a gyro system. Um, in most cases, you're going to be using PPM positive or UDI for third-party external devices. So we'll go ahead and convert real quickly. Um, let's say we're going to go ahead and use UDI. Now what that means is all of the channels that you have provided information for are now being sent digitally across a single wire output to a device, which then de decodes that output, breaks that back up, and sends it out to the servos independently of your receiver. Um, in this case, UDI is used by a lot of the really common devices. Uh, especially in the helicopter fly barless market, so keep that in mind. And this really does apply to you guys. Um, we'll go down from serial link to general setting. This is where our output settings are going to be set. This is where our PPM setting for either direct, or PPM and UDI for direct or computed, and our alarm settings for low voltage. This is one of our legacy built in alarms. Uh, if you have a system that tends to push the packs down, um, you can drop that down to about 4 volts cell so you don't hear it constantly beeping every time you plug it in and pull, pull the power back off. Depends on how much voltage you're pushing through the back. If your system set to 5 volts and there's a good draw when you plug it in from resistance, then you're going to get that alarm every time. So just drop that down below the, uh, the setting that, that's catching that. 3.3 uh, is fine, 3.5 is fine, anywhere down below 4 volts so it doesn't drive you crazy. Go ahead and jump out of there. Failsafe, uh, we've gone over this in the Central Box 200 Device Explorer video, uh, but we'll go ahead and go through it again real quickly for you. Failsafe can be enabled or disabled. We'll go ahead and leave it enabled. You'll notice the next thing is our failsafe delay time, which is 1.5 seconds at default. This is how long it takes for failsafe to kick in after signal loss occurs. Uh, go down a little bit farther where it sets safe where it says set failsafe positions now you'll notice that each of the output pins has a mode associated with it hold uh, goes to failsafe and maintains the last input recorded out or off which is the second one actually pulls power and signal from the servo outputs uh, allowing them to flag uh, naturally or move in the air currents uh, the last one is actually failsafe. This is where you set a specific value or position for each of those servos or each of those outputs and a speed at which it reaches that specific output. Uh, throttle servo, you're going to set that down to below idle throttle um, and you're going to set that speed fairly quickly because you want to come right off the throttle on, on a fuel situation or fuel, fuel airplane. Um, but you want to go through with the airplane powered and set all of your output positions based on your neutral positions on your surface or whatever that desired result is. I'll go ahead and jump out of failsafe and go into alternate, alternative pin configuration. This is where you can set each of those outputs to either servo, digital output, or digital input. Like if you're using an external device like a head tracker or something that uses binary signal and wants to send transmit binary signal through the receiver uh, back to the radio, you can do that here. Um, servo output it is of course servo output so we'll go ahead and go on to the next one is our receiver output so this is where it gets kind of fun because we've set up serial link as UDI currently on our satellite port we're 
we're sending all of our program channels out through a single wire through satellite port as well as pins one through four following our standard uh, servo assignment in our in our model tab in the radio but let's say that we have in our system I'll let you take a look we have nine pins on this receiver um, and they're gonna follow basically alongside or along with our normal configuration so um, pin one is going to match up with with what our assignment is in the radio for our servo assignments so throttle and throttle but let's say we're running UDI to a management system and that management system is handling all the servo output duties uh, for our standard flight controls throttle aileron flap elevator and rudder and we want to put our gear out of the output pins on the receiver well we can't just plug our gear into output pin one because it's going to match our servo assignment and so it's going to be tied to throttle but what you can do is you can go in and you can change the actual outputs at the receiver and this is really nice if you're using serial link output um, let's say in a helicopter to a fly barless controller uh, and you're only sending six or seven channels out to the fly barless controller if you're using a nine channel receiver that's going to leave all all nine of those pins open and available for programming for other duties uh, so what you would do is go into output pin one select the pin click on the assignment that's listed and you can go in and scroll down and in this case we have a couple of gears and a couple of air brakes so we can assign any one of those because they're going to be outside of our 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 flight control stream that we're sending to our fly barless controller or our flight controller or gyro system uh, we click on that we assign that so now output pin one on the receiver itself is going to send the gear the data for the gear servo but our satellite port is going to send all of our flight control data from servo assignment uh, so our throttle which is on servo assignment one is going through serial link UDI to our controller and then our gear which is actually servo assignment 12 is going to come from output pin one uh, it's a little confusing work with it actually set up a simple setup for yourself so you can understand how to do this if you get hung up don't hesitate to watch the video a couple times in a row, then, then reach out to us. Let us know where you're stuck and we can give you a hand. Uh, thanks for joining me and we hope to see you next time.